Proverbs chapter number 12. Two more announcements. First of all, I forgot to mention the book man is here this evening, so make sure if you haven't already, uh, after the service, make sure you go, uh, go see him. And the back table's back there, a lot of good material back there. You'll, uh, we're glad as he is able to be with us. And this is going to sadden some of you. There is no choir practice after, no children's or adult practice afterwards. So I know that, that, that brings tears to your eyes, so make sure... Uh, if you can't, before, after here, make sure you go see the bookman if you haven't done so already, and then uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. I have a three-hour-long sermon, so instead of we just cancel, <laughs> cancel choir practice, that way I have plenty of time. Now I'm, af- now I'm afraid after about so long you walk out anyways. All right. Uh, let's see, Hebrews chapter number 12. I'm trying to see if I can hopefully be a help to you this evening. Try to get this across to you. Hebrews chapter number 12 and verse number 1. The Bible says this, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of of the throne of God. Uh, the Bible talks about, of course, we, we liken the Christian life, Paul does on several occasions, to a race. And when we get saved, we, uh, we, be, we begin that race, but it's not like the typical race that we're used to. This race that, that God has put us on, we're not racing against, against an opponent, if you will. We're not, we don't, we're, not, uh, we're not competing with our fellow brothers or sisters in Christ to see who can get farther along in this race than somebody else. This race that we're on is we're against ourselves. Now, if we, uh, during this race, now if, uh, if, we don't, uh, if we don't get as far as long as we should have or could have, then that is because of us. Now, if we fall down, it's up to us to pick ourselves back up. But we are, but it's, we're not, we're, we're, sometimes we get sidetracked and we compete where we look to, Christians maybe who've been saved for a long period of time and we wonder why, uh, why we're not as far as long as we should be or we look to others who we think uh, should be farther along in their journey. But God says this, is, this, is, this uh, race that we're on is for us. But this race, there is a lot of times there's things that trip us up along the way. And the Bible says here we see in Hebrews 12 it talks about, of course we know about the besetting sin. And we also, it talks about uh, also laying aside weights. I believe we all want to be used of God. We would like to do something great for God. We'd like to God to use us to do something uh, in our lives. We want our we want our lives to be meaningful. When we you know when we look when we look uh, when we come to our, uh, the end of our life, uh, like um, Paul did, and he says, "No, I fought a good fight." And we want to we want to we want to look back in our life and and uh, see. Uh, and think about all the things we could have done, and all we want to look back, and we want to look back without having regrets, uh, if you will. But there's many things as we're on this race that are going to try to uh, the, the get us off track, and are going to try to uh, get us off course, if you will. And those things, uh, uh, these, uh, these, sometimes it may be the company we keep. It could be bad habits that we have. Whatever it will, it could be maybe an addiction, but there's going to be something that is going to try to get us off the course that we should be on. And uh, I want to just speak to you tonight on just a couple of uh, things that we can do maybe to, uh, to break the bad habits that we have. Because ultimately our goal is to, uh, to be like Christ. Uh, along this journey, the, the journey is to be uh, more like Christ as the weeks and days and as the, the, the years go past. Uh, so we have to make sure there's nothing that are, interferes with that goal of uh, of molding to the image of Christ. So I'm going to give you a couple of things that could uh, uh, that could help us uh, today. First of all, we need to have we need to have this mentality. Now, if God's against it, then so am I. Amos three three tells us this: Can two walk together except they be agreed? You know, we have to we have to decide if we're gonna if we're gonna kick these bad habits, if we're gonna kick the additions, if we're gonna kick those weights that is talked about in Hebrews, that we're going to have to say, you know what, 
And we're going to have to look at the Bible and say, you know, if, God, if God's against the, this, and so am I. Let me give you a couple verses here. Galatians 5, 19, 19 through 21 tells us, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, uh, uh, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, and drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. And we read in Proverbs 6, Proverbs chapter number 6, starting in verse number 16, it says, These six things doth the Lord hate. Now when we read that, there should be a kind of a red flag that goes off. Now if God, if God starts off the verse, you know, these six things do I hate, and it goes on, yea, seven things in our abomination, these are probably, uh, if I had to guess, these are probably things that we should steer away from. And God, God is, uh, there are times in the Bible God is very uh, clear on what he expects uh, us to do and not to do. So as, uh, as we read these, uh, we should, uh, uh, we should uh, take heed, take warning to them. But it says, verse number 17, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that uh, devises wicked imaginations. Feet that sw- uh, sweet feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Now, if we're gonna, if we're gonna say we're against it, we have to uh, know what God calls a sin. We have to call a sin. What God calls an abomination, I have to call an abomination. What God says is right, I have to say is right. What God says is wrong, I have to say it's wrong. Exodus 30, uh, 32, 26 says, Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And on the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. Matthew 12, uh, Matthew 12 uh, verse number 30, and Luke eleven twenty three 23, say about the same thing. He that is not with me is against me. Now, we have to, de- we have to decide in this, uh, on this race, on this journey that we're on. You now, if we're going to stay on the right path, we're going to decide, you know, whose side are we on? And we're, at, we're, we're uh, during, the, uh, during our Christian life, we're going to have to take sides. You know, you know the world and uh, and uh, maybe other people are going to, are going to try to tell us, uh, are going to try to switch sides, so to speak. They're going to try to persuade us uh, to, that uh, uh, differently than what, we, what, what we've been taught and what the Bible says. They're going to try to persuade us one way or another. But we have to, uh, like Daniel in Daniel one eight, it says Daniel purposed in his heart. Or talk, that's the same way it talks about where Daniel settles in his heart. He, almost like a court case, when a judge makes a ruling, you no, know, when he, when he, when he makes his final decision, that is the law, that is the ruling, and that's in the books, and that, and that, that nothing can change that. And we have to decide, you know what? What I've been taught, what the Bible teaches, nothing can change that. And I'm not gonna let I'm not gonna let the news tell me what's a sin, what's not a sin. I'm not gonna let other people tell me uh, what is right and what's wrong. I'm like other people tell me what uh, uh, what it, uh, what is acceptable. I'm gonna let God do that for me. I'm gonna let the Bible tell me uh, what is appropriate and what is right and and uh, what is wrong. The Bible, uh, the Bible, one of the purposes of the Bible is to teach us uh, what is right and what is not right and how to stay right. And our job is. It's not uh, we. To, it's not our. It's not the the Bible's responsibility or God's responsibility to conform to our way of thinking. Uh, too many people look for they're looking for a church and a Bible that fits what they want and fits what their needs and fits uh, what what they, molds around to their way of thinking. Instead of looking at the Bible, looking what God says and say, "Okay, God, this is right and this is wrong." God, I'm make. A, I'm not going to. I'm not going to conform to your way of thinking. I'm not going to allow, uh, and I'm not going to allow other people to steer me either direction. But we have to. We have to decide. You know what? Uh, we have to. There has. There's going to. There has to be a time that we have to draw an imaginary line, so to speak, in the in the sand. And we're going to have to look at that line. Okay, they say this is what. This is God's way of doing things, and this is uh, the world's way of doing things. And we're going to. And we're going to have to make sure we do our best. Do whatever we can. Not to cross that line with teenagers. Well, I, we've been t- teaching about different things, and I and know we talk about you know how to stay away from that line, how to stay away from the edge, and we talk about you know the, the purpose of a, of of having different standards and different uh, convictions in our life is not to 
is not to show off uh, what a what a wonderful strong Christian we are. And I don't have convictions in my life uh, uh, to, to show to to brag. I have standards and convictions because I know what a weak Christian I am, and I know if I don't have these uh, standards and convictions. And then I'm gonna, then I'm gonna I live as close as I can to that line. And it, it's gonna be a matter of time until I fall off that edge, until I, until I cross that line. You know what, you know, we, we live, uh, we live in such a way that we think that we could, we could never do this, we could never, uh, commit this. But yet, um, the problem is we live too close to that line. And if we're gonna, if we're gonna kick that bad habit, or if we're gonna kick that sin, or gonna kick that weight, and then we're going to have to say, you know what, uh, if God's against us or this is what God says, that uh, if God is for this or if God's against us, then so am I. Um, another thing we have to realize that every uh, sin or every habit, every sin has its origin in our hearts. Every sin has its origin in our hearts. Ephesians 5, 11, and 12 uh, tell us this. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. You know, if we're not if we're not careful, then we could we could we could turn on the news. We could uh, we could uh, look on, scroll through our news feed and Facebook and see the latest news and and see all the the tragic things that are happening in uh, in our society and we can and we we could have the thinking you know what how can how can they be so cruel to do that how can they how can they stoop so low as to do that instead of realizing that we're uh but by the grace of god we're not too far off from being just like they are you know it all the, their their sins and their actions started from a thought started from a heart started from uh, starting from a bad influence, whether the company they kept or uh, what, they, what they allowed to influence them, what they what they allow themselves to hear, what they allow themselves to uh, to see, um, because the Bible tells us that in uh, Jeremiah seven nine, the heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Over time, you know, if we're not careful, uh, we can we can grow accustomed to our sin over time. Now, first of all, first it starts out. You know what I would. I would I would never do this. Then uh, then over time, or maybe over influences, we say, you know what? Maybe this is not such a bad idea after all. Now look at our look at how our society accepts homosexuality now. It used to be, you know what? We don't even, we don't want we don't want to talk about it. I know this is guys against us. It's an abomination. And now all of a sudden, decades uh, a few decades later, now all of a sudden, well. It, it's it's their choice, and then they can. It's their lifestyle. They can they can. It, this is this is not just the world. This is also Christians as well. No, it's their choice. You know what? Uh, they, maybe maybe this is uh, no. As long as as long as yes, I've, that I wouldn't agree with it. But as long as I don't think it's wrong if they they keep it to themselves, and we go accustomed to those different sins in our life, and we we allow those sins and allow those habits uh, to stick around, and. Uh, uh, we we seem to convince ourselves. You know what? I'm not I'm not hurting anybody. This is I know I'm going to keep this to myself. You know what? Uh, you know as much as I would like to to kick this in, much as I would like to kick this habit, and we look around, we look at everybody else. You no, know, ever uh, even we look around and well, everybody else seems to uh, having the same struggles that I am. So maybe 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 this is just the way it was meant to be. Maybe it's just, you know my you know we we look at talk about generation generational sins. You know. Uh, you know, my family had this problem. My dad, my mom had this problem. So maybe I'm just stuck like this. And we get accustomed to those, uh, to uh, different things over time. But all the sins that we have, the Bible says in Proverbs 23, 7, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. And we begin to, or sometimes we begin to, uh, we begin to uh, look at our, uh, look at our, look at our past, what, what, the things that we used to do. And we look at the wicked things that we've done, and and when we when we when we begin to uh, think about uh, what we've done and how uh, maybe God can't use us, or we think about uh, things we're missing out on, or things we influence, we allow the devil to work. We allow we allow the devil devil to stir up desires and 
and uh, the lusts and different things in our hearts. What we think would normally, uh, what we think, you know what, that I, could, I would never enter, entertain the thought. But uh, because of different things, the devil finds uh, uh, the devil finds a way and finds a wedge uh, between us and begins to work and begins to uh, begins to uh, put that just a little thought into our our minds. Maybe it was just uh, we just entertained a thought, and all of a sudden uh, here we are. Uh, before we did it, we we thought about it. So every sin begins with the origin of our heart. And the third thing is. Now, it is easier to keep the heart clean than it is to clean it up, at, than it is to clean it after it has been stained. Well, this is for, this is for everybody, of course, but especially uh, to, now, to, to our young people. Now, if, uh, you know, if, uh, when you're around other teenagers or other kids, whether, uh, whether here or at school, and they begin to uh, talk about different, uh, different things, and uh, and you're and you're thinking to yourself, you know, I have no idea what they're talking about, whether it's a movie or whether uh, it's a, uh, whether it's the latest thing that teenagers are talking about, whether it's a uh, uh, music or just something you never heard of before. Be glad that you, be glad you don't know what they're talking about at times. There's nothing there's nothing wrong with 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 being uh, with being naive at times. We don't have to know uh, everything. Be thankful that. Uh, that your that your parents, that your loved one, uh, do their best to shield you from certain things. Be thankful for that. Don't don't uh, don't uh, don't wish uh, you were like uh, somebody else. I told I think I told this uh, to somebody, but there was a, a story somebody told about. Uh, it, there was a group of kids uh, in high school, and every every morning they would meet for breakfast in the cafeteria. And this was over. They happened to meet at a certain time. This group of kids, and it was. It was on a Monday, and it was after the weekend, and they were, and all the kids at the table were talking about all the fun they had. They were talking about all the parties that they went to, and they were bragging about uh, the girls they were with, and they were bragging about the boys they were with, and their immorality and the drugs and all that stuff that they did. And they asked uh, one particular young man, you know, what did you do this weekend? What did you, what kind of fun did you have? And he began, he began to tell them, you know, I went to a church and I did these different things. And they began to laugh at him, and they began to poke fun of him, and they, and they tried to get underneath his, his skin, and he, and, he, and he made this statement to him. He says, I can, anytime I want, I can be like you are. But he said, you, would, you never again can be like I am. Now, that's what we have to think about it. And that's what we have to think about. You know what, we can't, uh, you know, those of you who are older and maybe made, made mistakes in the past and things that you regret, you know that you can't, as much as you like to forget some of the mistakes you made, as much as you know that God's forgiven you to, uh, to them, but you know that there's still those regrets and still those uh, thoughts that as much as you try, that they, they entertain your mind, that you have to, you have to do your best uh, to keep them away and never go back to those, uh, uh, to those ways again. But be thankful uh, that, uh, that uh, if you have a clean heart, be thankful you don't know that. And, uh, but, uh, because once, uh, once we, once we, once we make, uh, make, have those marks in our life, once we make those mistakes, it, it is hard to, uh, to, to get ourselves to clean again. It says in, um, of course, it, it talks about in Proverbs, uh, excuse me, Psalm 51:10, when, uh, that's, uh, the prayer of David after he committed the sin with Bathsheba and after he was caught, and this is his prayer to forgiveness with God. And he says in verse number 10, create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. David knew he messed up. And David was begging God, God, give me that, give me that heart I used to have once again. Give me that clean heart that I, that I used to have, the heart that desired uh, to please you, the heart that, that uh, wanted to spend time with you. And renew that right spirit within me. Because somewhere along the way, some ter- uh, whether, whether it be pride or whether, it was, whether whatever it was, I got David off track on his race or on his uh, journey. He was asking God, God, I, I, need, what I, I need what I once had. Because he knew how difficult, he knew he needed God's help. He knew he needed that clean heart again. Because he wanted to, uh, he wanted to, to do something uh, for God. He wanted to, he wanted to, uh, to, uh, to be like he used to be. And it says, uh, Psalm, uh, Psalms 1, verses, uh, the first couple of verses, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and, his, and in his law doth he meditate 
day and night. That is how uh, we talked about it uh, last week uh, or a couple weeks ago. That's how we stay clean. Uh, the, 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 re, the way we stay clean, the way we have, or way the, the way we get clean is we, we are continually, we are daily, constantly in his word. We're constantly uh, have a, a, that close walk relationship with God. We're constantly asking God like David did time and time again in the book of uh, Psalms. You know, God examine me. God see, is there any wicked way in me? God, is there, is there, is there something in my life? Is there... Uh, maybe not even a sin, but God, is there something that's keeping me down? Is there something that's weighing me down? Is there something, do you, do you, is there something contrary to how you want me to be? And he was constantly asking God to, he wanted to be an open book, so to speak, if you will. He wanted, he wanted God to have access to every part of his life, and he wanted to make sure that there wasn't anything that uh, maybe he didn't even, uh, maybe things that he was looking past that God would not be uh, pleased with. Uh, something else, number four. A couple more and we finished. Uh, he said, we can't kick a bad habit while we're indulging it. Uh, Ecclesiastes 5.10, he that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver, nor he that loveth abundance with increase, that is also a vanity. You know, where we have this, uh, the reason sometimes we don't like to they kick the bad habits, the reason why we can't, uh, the reason why we have the mentality is that uh, we don't want to, uh, to kick the, uh, the addiction or we don't want to kick uh, the, the sin or the weight. Or the the bad habit that we have, or maybe even maybe even the company we keep. Maybe there's a friend that we've had for a long time, and we kn- we know that they're not good for us. We know they're uh, they're keeping us down. We know that uh, we know that we can't change them, but yet we keep them around uh, anyways uh, because we're afraid to uh, maybe to hurt their feelings. But we uh, we 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 keep around them, and we keep that bad habit just close to us because we uh, truthfully we don't we we, we don't want to get rid of it. Truthfully, we we. We like the bad habit that we don't want to change our attitude. We don't want to change uh, this. We like the sin that we're doing. We we uh, we 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 find pleasure in it. And and uh, as much as we may entertain it, all you know what? I wonder what it'd be like to, to if I could. No, I would love I would love to to get rid of this. But yet we do we do nothing to put up standards or put up walls, if you will, to try to keep us from the committing uh, that sin, from entertaining that. Uh, from entertaining that we, we that know if we if there's something that that you know that God is even right now revealing to your mind you know is keeping you from doing what you're supposed to do for God and you know it's a bad habit you know God is not pleased with it you know God is not happy with it you know as long as as long as as long as it's around that you can't uh, the, can't you grow in your Christian life but yet, you, yet we do nothing to Put up walls and standards to try to keep us, or try to set up standards and convictions to try to, to, to from crossing that line again. And then the truth is, we we like it too much to uh, to get rid of it. Uh, no, we have to. Uh, we no, we 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 tell ourselves that uh, you know what uh, the ne- you know what uh, the next time the next time I do this, now I'm going to get rid of it. the next. We always we always we put things off till tomorrow, and truthfully, tomorrow never comes. As we say, no, I'll start this tomorrow. I'll do this tomorrow, and truthfully, tomorrow never comes. Uh, ne- next thing, two more, and I'm finished. Uh, s- small compromises, small compromises, lead to great disasters. Small compromises lead to to great disasters. Luke 16:10 tells us, "He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much, and he that is unjust in the least is unjust also so much." Now, this is good. Listen to this. You will never read your Bible every day until you read your Bible on the days you don't want to. You know what? Uh, we, all, we, all, we talk about, uh, uh, we, we, we try to stress how, how important it is to, to read your Bible every day. But the truth it is, until it becomes a priority, until it is, uh, it will never happen. Or the things we want to do will never happen if we don't do it on the days we don't feel like doing it. And there's all days, you know, we get up, uh, we get up and we go to work even though we don't want to. We get up, you know, as parents, we have to take care uh, of our kids even the days we, we really don't want to. And the same thing is going to have to, we're going to have to make the same priority when it comes to the things of God. When it comes to, when it comes to our Bible reading, when it comes to, to prayer, we have to, we have to decide, you know what, this is, this is more important than anything else. You know what? I really, I'm tired. You know what? I don't feel good. I really don't feel like reading my Bible. But you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that today. You know what? Uh, this, I don't feel like praying today. But no, I'm gonna make time to do that. And we have to, 
we have to if we don't if we don't decide that and then we'll we'll start we'll start letting the little things go you know what i can you know what i don't i don't need to I don't have to be in church every Sunday, or I don't have to be in church every Wednesday night. Oh, you know, I don't have to read my Bible every day. You know what? I can, I can, uh, I can skip this for for one day, and before before long, that uh, that one day bec- turns into a couple weeks, turns into a couple months. Before long, we we kind of look back over the last couple weeks and wonder how do we get this way? Because we allow small compromises to 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 get into our path. I mean. Look, I think it was uh, not too long ago. The what our what our government did. Uh, we had uh, they were trying to come up with a budget and they made compromises and try to try to push things off and push things off and it led to a, a shutdown. Many hundreds of millions of dollars were lost because a group of people could not get together because they kept on uh, they kept on pushing things aside. They couldn't come to an agreement. Lastly. Those who do not love the Lord will not help us to serve the Lord. And that, once again, referring back to, or well, referring back to the, the company that we keep. Uh, John 15:19 tells us, "If you were of the world, the world would not love his own. But because you are not of the world, I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hateth you." We have to, uh, we have to get this into our, uh, into our. Um, brains that as long as we're trying to do something for God, as long as we're we're trying to stay on the right the right ways, there's gonna there's gonna be people that just don't see eye to eye with us. There's gonna be get people who try to get us off course. I remember growing up when I was and I like some of you in here, I started as, as a eight year old boy. I started riding a bus to church. And for a long, for many, many Sundays, I went by myself. Uh, and then, as my brothers and sisters, uh, sister got older, they began to go with me. But we used to go. My parents did not go with us. And then, as I became, uh, as I got into middle school and high school, I started going to church on Sunday nights and on Wednesday nights. And I started going to activities and I started going to conferences. And I started uh, to in, enjoy myself. And uh, I believe there's a time that my parents they. They resented that they were uh, they I get I don't know maybe it was a, the Lord working on them or what it was, but they they really especially my dad for the longest time he gave me a hard time about coming to church. I can't tell you how many times I was punished from coming to church. Probably about every about every other week I was told you're never going back to that church. And a couple of days later, and then of course I was I, w- I went back again, but uh, and I was by far uh, nowhere near the Christian I ought to be, and I I'm, I'm sure. Uh, being a naive uh, young person, I handle things the wrong way. But I know I had a, uh, I know that uh, I know that God loved me. I know that I loved going to church, and I, I enjoyed I enjoyed those things. But for the longest time, and I believe maybe it was Satan, because Satan will use anybody and anything to keep us off track. What he loves to do the most is try to use the people. That we love the most. He'll use your family. He'll use uh, he'll use our spouse. He'll use our he'll use our kids. He'll use uh, uh, people. Uh, I used to get uh, you know picked on or you no know, looked at differently by all my relatives. But now when we go home when when I go back to to Maryland and different places and I and we have family get-togethers every so often around Christmas or different things. Now those that same family. That uh, made funny, that made fun of me. That 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 thought, that looked at me kind of funny or didn't understand. But now they now they respect the decisions that that I've made, and they now they understand the, the why I made what I've made because I chose. You know what? There's uh, the, that I know there's some family that I just can't keep around because their lifestyle doesn't match up with my lifestyle. And I know that the only person who can change them, and I and I love them, and I witness to them, and I talk to them. But there's some people, you know, my best friend growing up. Was my my cousin Billy? We're about to say he's just a few years older than I am, and we we were always together, always. His mom, my aunt, babysitted, uh, babysat uh, me and my me and my brothers and sisters. We were we were together constantly. Uh, we grew up just about in the same. We were in the same grade. We were uh, we knew where one was, the, the the other one was bound to be. We played sports together. We did everything. But grow, and growing up, and though I. When we grew up in church together, his mom used to teach and uh, taught for a while in our junior church department. We grew up in church together, but then things began to happen, and he, as he grew older, he went, he uh, made some, 
uh, decisions, and I made different decisions. And growing up, I knew, uh, growing up and, uh, and then uh, going off to college and different things, I knew I couldn't spend as much time. I still love him. We're still good friends. We still talk uh, when I go see him. But I just know there's some people that I just can't be around. Some family members I know that I can't be around for, or friends that, that I used to have that I can't spend too much time with because that, those will get me off track. All of us have a race that we're on. That, that's no question. All of us have, uh, all of us are maybe on, have been on our race, on our journey for different periods of time. We're all on, we're all on different positions. We're all on different uh, ways. And, but the, we all have come across from time to time, whether you have in the past, maybe there's some things you've conquered in the past, or maybe you're coming up to one, or maybe right now you're, you, there's something in your, uh, there's some obstacle that you know it's your time to cross in order to take, to go a little bit farther in your journey. A couple ways to do that is to decide, you know what, if God's against it, then so am I. And also, we have to realize that uh, every sin has its origin in our hearts. Don't think we're better than anybody else, because the same desires, the same, the same sin that, uh, that uh, the devil tempted them with is uh, that we, that, uh, we uh, down inside of us as well. And remember, it's easier to keep your heart clean than it is to, than is to clean it up after it's been stained. Uh, you can't kick a habit if you're, uh, if you're, if you're continually indulging. If you're indulging it, you can't uh, kick it, and you have to, you're going to have to uh, get rid of it and forsake it. Remember, small compromises lead to great disasters. And those who do not love the Lord will not help you serve the Lord. Maybe it's an examination tonight just to look and say, you know what, and I, I, I want to take that next step in my Christian life. I want to go a little step uh, in my journey. Or maybe to make a decision uh, tonight that I'm not going to allow anything to uh, to get my uh, to obscure me or uh, uh, get me off path that shouldn't be there. Let's uh, during the invitation. Let's have can you pin up here? Let's bow our head and close our eyes. Tell me, Father, with your thankful for your word and the promise we find therein.